Hi everyone, welcome to the 16th module of our Verilog HDL crash course and in this module we are going to cover Verilog system tasks and functions. So before I start this video, just a small request, if you are visiting to this channel first time or if you have not subscribed this channel so far, please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video on VLSI technical educational topics. So now let's get started. So Verilog system tasks and functions are basically used to generate input and outputs during simulation. And they always starts with a dollar sign. And Verilog contains the predefined system tasks and functions including tasks for creating output from a simulation. And operations such as displaying the screen, monitoring values of some mates, Stuffing and finishing the simulation are done by system tasks. The example could be dollar display, dollar time, dollar finish. We will see each and every examples of system tasks and functions in this module. So now let's first cover the dollar display, dollar stroke and dollar monitor system task. So all of these system tasks basically displays the selected variables. We are going to see what is the syntax to be used to call these system tasks using some examples in next slides. So all these tasks are basically used to display the selected variable values during the simulation. And all these commands have the same syntax and display text on the screen during simulation. The dollar display and dollar stroke display once every time they are executed. So whenever the dollar display and dollar stroke system tasks are executed they are going to display the values of selected variables whereas dollar monitor displays every time one of its parameter or variable is going to change so whenever there is a change in any of the variables which we have put in dollar monitor system tasks the dollar monitor system tasks is going to be executed so this is similar to, for example, a always procedural block where whenever there is a change in the sensitivity list of the always procedural block, the block is going to be executed. So similarly, whenever there is a change in the variables of dollar monitor system tasks, this task is going to be executed. And the difference between the dollar display and dollar stroke is that the dollar stroke displays the parameters or the variables at the very end of the current simulation time. So actually the dollar display and dollar stop system tasks displays the variable values whenever they are executed or whenever they are called. But the difference is dollar stop displays the variable at the end of the current simulation time. Whereas the dollar display will display the variables as soon as it is called. And the format which we can use to display the variables would be decimal format hexadecimal format, binary format, character, string format, time format and hierarchy level. So now let's see the syntax. So here you can see we have the dollar display system tasks. So first we have to put the format string in which basically in which format we want to display the variable. Then we would have the variable to be displayed and similarly the dollar stroke task where we have the format string and then the variables and then we have the monitor system task which will also have the same format and then we have the display b so display b also does the same work as display but by default it prints the variable in binary format then we have the stroke h which basically prints the variable in hexadecimal and then we have the monitor o that means this task is going to print the variable in octal format so now let's see some examples so here we have a initial block and then we are basically using the dollar display h that means we are going to print the variables in the hexadecimal format and then we have and here if we have the h defined then we do not have to define the string format the format of that variable inside this function or this task. So here we can directly use bd submodule.c. 
So basically, this task is going to print the value of variable b, d, and variable c, which is sitting inside sub mode one in hexadecimal. And then we have one another example where we are using the dollar monitor system task. And here, basically, first we are defining the format where first variable we are going to print in the time format, second variable in the hexadecimal and third variable in the binary format. And here we have the dollar time. That means whatever the current simulation time value is, that values will be printed here in the time format. And then the value of variable A, which will be printed in hexadecimal format and which will be equal to D equal to suppose the value of variable is one, then it will print D equal to one. And then the variable sub mode one dot c c variable value will be printed in binary format and that will be something like c equal to zero basically whatever is the bit width of this variable c that will be printed in binary format and it will be basically will be equal to c so if this is a two bit value then and the value is suppose zero zero or zero one at time instant t1 and t2 so at t1 variable c will be 00, zero t2 variable c will be 0, 01 and whenever so dollar monitor system task executes whenever there is a change in the variable value so suppose at t1 variable value c was 00, zero and at t2 it becomes 0, 01 so as soon as the variable c value becomes 0, 01 this system task is going to be executed and then it will print the value of variable c as 0, 01 now let's see the next system tasks or functions which are dollar time dollar s time and dollar real time so these all returns the current simulation time as a 64 bit integer so dollar time returns the value as a 64 bit integer and dollar s time returns the values in 32 bit unsigned integer format and real time will returns the value in real numbers and if the current simulation time is too large and the value does not fit in 32 bits, the dollar s time functions only returns the 32 lower order bits of the value. So I hope this is clear. And the syntax of these are we have to declare a variable. So if we are using the dollar time system task, that means it returns a 64 bit integer value. So we have to declare a variable integer. And then that variable will get the value from the dollar time system task whenever it is called and the dollar s time also returns a 32 bit unsigned integer so we again have to declare a variable which is type of integer and we have to assign the values written by the dollar s time function to this variable now the next is real time function so real time function basically returns a real value so we need to declare a variable of real type and the value written by the real time functions will get assigned to the variable which is of type real. So this is how we can use the dollar time, dollar s time and dollar real time system functions. Now let's see the next Verilog system task and functions which are reset, stop and finish. So reset basically resets the simulation back to time zero. Now let's understand how the simulation process starts so we have a simulator which is installed in a computer right so we have a computer with operating system and our particular simulator which we are using is installed right now whenever we have to simulate something first we have to invoke that particular simulator in this computer so we are going to invoke that simulator and then we are going to start the simulation so here invoking is happening and here we will start the simulation and then simulation will keep on running. So if during the simulations at any time if we are calling the reset system task it will reset the simulation back to time zero that means the simulation will start back from start point of this simulation which is here. Dollar stove system task is holds the simulation and puts it in an interactive mode where the user can enter commands. So if we are calling a stove system task, for example, here we called the stove dollar stove. 
that means now the simulation will stop at this particular point and then we can pass some commands to the to the simulator now the dollar finish system task actually exits the simulator back to the operating system so if we are calling a dollar finish that means it will basically kill the simulator that means it will basically return the resources which were allocated to invoke the simulator back to the operating system so we we are back at here so basically we have to re-invoke the simulator so remember that dollar finish control system task match the simulator exit however dollar stop simply suspends simulation now let's see the argument so here for the dollar stop and dollar finish we can give some arguments so the argument zero argument zero means whenever we call the dollar stop and dollar finish system task with argument zero it doesn't print any informational messages for example if we call the stop system task with argument zero it will just hold the simulation and there won't be any informational message printed on the screen and if we call these stop and finish system task with argument one it is going to print the simulation time and location as well so what is the simulation time when the dollar stop system functions function is executed and what is the location at which the simulation is going to be stopped or it is going to be finished and if we call these functions with the argument 2 they are going to print the simulation time location memory consumption and cpu time used during simulation so this is how depending on the requirements we can make use of these arguments along with these system tasks and by default if we do not pass any arguments to these uh, system tasks the default argument is considered as one that means it will print simulation time and location now let's see some examples so dollar stop dollar stop there is no argument that means default argument is one so it suspends the simulation and print messages and those messages are nothing but simulation time and location now if we call the finish system task like this has 150 dollar finish and argument is 2 so it is going to exit the simulator after 150 time minutes from the last executed statements for example there is one statement two statement three statement and after that we are putting 150 and dollar display and dollar finish so once this last statement is executed after 150 time units the simulator is going to be exit with argument 2 that means it is going to print the simulation time the location the memory consumption and the cpu time used in the simulation now let's see one another important very log system task which is deposit so dollar deposit sets a net to a particular value overwriting what was put there by the circuit so whenever we want to force some variable to a particular value we can make use of dollar deposit so what is the syntax of dollar deposit we have to use the dollar deposit keyword then the net name to which we want to update some value and then what is the value so for example here dollar deposit b one tick b0 that means the variable b the net b will be forced to a value 0 here we have the variable out p that means this is a 4 bit variable because the value we are putting at this variable is 4 bit width that means it is a 4 bit variable and the value which are forcing to this variable is nothing but 4 tick b 0 0 1 x so this dollar deposit is very important in very low base test benches where you want to force some variable to a particular value to test some features of the design we can make use of dollar deposit system task so i hope this is clear